Victory's Gunner brings modern, V-twin performance and a fresh take on the classic bobber look. Essentially unchanged between 2015 and 2017, the Gunner carries the Freedom 106 6 mil that pushes it into the power cruiser category with 100 plus pounds of grunt and a top speed upwards of 130 miles per hour. It needs every bit of that power to compete against the other big US players. Harley Davidson and Victory's sister under the Polaris umbrella and longtime HD foe, Indian Motorcycles. As the new kid on a very tough block, Victory bills itself as the American performance brand, a brave moniker if you aren't prepared to back it up. Let's see what Victory has in store for us in its base model cruiser, ya yeah, no, other than the monster V-twin. Design the gunner attempts to hail back to the custom bobber slash gazer styles that saw everything non-essential removed, and everything that remained cut down to a minimum. Right off the bat we have a cut down front fender that is made to look even more insignificant by the fat front tire and blackout fork sliders. As usual with Victory products, there is a bit of a Ness-like swoop, but in the gunner's case it is limited to the fuel tank and isn't nearly as apparent as on some of their other model families. The solo saddle comes with a generous but retaining lip to help the rider deal with the arm stretching acceleration, and it terminates over a cut down rear fender that looks more like a garage job than a factory one. A tucked away taillight falls below the fender, so the standoff turn signals are the only blemish on an otherwise clean as a whistle ass end. On the subject of asses, the rider's butt rides a mere 25 inches off the ground with 4.7 inches of ground clearance under the frame, so center of gravity is necessarily low and the bike is easy to manage with feet down even for my fellow shorties. Pullback handlebars and forward controls put the rider in the windsock position which is fine for around town but will be tiresome on longer trips and I find it not very confidence inspiring with my less than lengthy inseam. Chassis tubular steel members make up the double down tube, double cradle frame with a yoke style swing arm to finish off the standing chassis. The steering head comes set up for 32 degrees of rake with 6.7 inches of trail and a stable ride, even at speed. Naturally this is a trade-off that makes the gunner less than eager in the corners. A central mount, gas-charged Minoshock supports the rear end on 3 inches of travel with adjustable spring preload. Since the shock comes tucked away in the bowels of the machine well out of view, it doesn't mar the squeaky clean rear fender. Right way up forks support the front end on 5.1 inches of travel, but as usual with American style cruisers, the front forks come with fixed values and are completely non-adjustable. While this isn't surprising, I expect to see more cruisers jump on the bandwagon and start running adjustable gear in traditional, BWA formats, and so I'm a little disappointed that the progressively minded Victory hasn't taken that first step. For me, the 24-spoke, 16-inch, cast aluminum rims are the coolest looking feature on the entire bike. Dunlop provides the road rubber with its 491E2RWL tires, and the visual weight comes from the wide, 130 90s up front and even wider 140 90s in back. At 682 pounds wet, I'm a little surprised to see only a single disc on the front wheel, even if it is 300 mm in diameter with a four-pot, opposed piston caliper to bind it. The rear wheel also sports a 300 mm disc with a twin-pot binder, but no linked brakes or ABS to complicate things. Much like the non-adjustable forks, I expect non-ABS bikes to be extinct within this decade except on the most budget-minded models. Drive a train Victory's massive Freedom 106 mil is undeniably the showpiece of the gunner, and the 50-degree layout keeps it looking right for the US market. Although it carries a layout similar to that used by both Harley and Indian, Victory shuns the external pushroad tubes and doesn't take any steps at all to channel any particular historical look, just honest V-twin inches. Hydraulic lifters actuate the four valve heads, 
and the 101 mm bore and 108 mm stroke gives us a 1731 cc total displacement with a mild 9.4 to 1 compression ratio. Nothing ruins a cruiser destined for the US market quicker than a radiator, but the ample cooling fins clearly mark this mill as an air-cooled design. A 45 mm throttle body feeds the beast, and the result is a solid 110 pound-feet of torque that manages to be thrilling in spite of its great overall weight. A standard, non-slipper clutch couples engine power to a six-speed, constant mesh, overdrive transmission, and a carbon-reinforced belt carries power to the rear wheel. One might note the lack of traction control or power delivery options, but as with the suspension, bikes in this class usually don't come with all the bells and whistles, so it's another area with room for improvement. Pricing back in single quote 15, the gunner could be had for $12,999. But the price jumped $500 up to $13,499 in single quote 16 and is holding there for the 2017 model year.